Business is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, happy publishing and writing and vision for where you're going in your author time. And what we're going to be doing today is talking about something we don't talk about often. But, but, I bet, I bet someone has said, especially if you're a fiction writer or you have a story idea, someone has said, this would be a great movie, right? So, we're going to talk about movie dumb. We're going to talk about screenwriting, script writing. And with me is one of Hollywood's really um, powers of bee in the whole script writing field. And with me is Danny Manis. He is the author of No BS for Screenwriters. And he is going to give you advice from the executive perspective. Danny is an in-demand script consultant. He's CEO of No Bull Script Consulting. You can find that at uh, nobullscript.net. And he's been ranked in the cream of the crop script consultants by the Creative Screenwriting Magazine. So I, I just want to just jump into this because he is he, the clients he's worked with have won, uh, you know, fellowships in the ABC Disney Fellowship and and the Page Awards and the Austin Film Festival, Nashville Film Festival, and Scriptapalooza. So, Danny, I think I want you to tell me about Scriptapalooza, but we're going to jump into this because there's a lot of questions, and I know a lot of authors think that their book would be the perfect movie, but they're clueless of what to do, where to go, how to go about doing it, and and I guess maybe the question is, really, is it really the perfect movie? So, we can go all over today, but let's just kind of jump into this. Um, and that uh, how do they really decide or know maybe if they've got a, a worthwhile idea? Uh, sure. Well, thank you for having me, and thank you for that lovely introduction. I, uh, I should just have people introduce me everywhere I go with that, with that lovely introduction. Um, well, there you go. <laughs> um, you know, it's hard because, yeah, the number one thing I hear from not just my book clients, but uh, writers everywhere at every conference and every, you know, the social media aspect is everyone says my book should be a movie. Um, and, and, yeah, probably, you know, 90 plus percent of them are wrong. Um, you yep. know, Hollywood <laughs> has a different mindset in terms of what they're looking for and what they can sell. Uh, and at what price point it becomes profitable for them to try to do so. And book, the book world is, is much, much different. Uh, it's not just a different style of writing. It is a different style of selling. Uh, and so, you know, the, what, what most book writers don't know <clears throat> is how hard it is to sell a script because everyone says, oh, my God, it's so hard to get published. It's so hard to find an agent or, you know, find a great editor. Um, but there's about 250,000 books published every year, and there's about 250 movies that are bought. Uh, and that, that, just, that scale is the difference between trying to get a book made and trying to get a movie made. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> You know, and it's different because what you have to do in terms of, uh, you know, you know your platform in books and you have to know your demographic, but there is a demographic for everything in books. There is a publisher looking to publish every type of product. You know, there is a publisher for you out there somewhere. If it's really well written, there's someone looking to make what you're writing. 
And in film, you know, there's seven studios, and they're all looking for the exact same movie. Uh, mm. And so it is really, really hard uh, to find someone that is looking for the thing that you're trying to make, unless you're trying to make, you know, a superhero movie or something, you know, on a grand scale. But you can't make that as a first-time writer. You can't write a superhero movie for $200 million and go out and sell it. Um, that's just never going to happen. Uh, so it becomes much harder. So what you need to do <clears throat> to know if your book can become uh, or has the potential to become a movie or a TV series, uh, especially if you're writing a book series, uh, if you're writing a book series, um, don't write a 10-part series <laughs> uh, because no one's making a 10-part movie. Uh, I get a lot of that. In fact, you know, since in the last probably 10 years, everybody's writing a book. Se- I mean, since Harry Potter, really, everybody's mm-hmm. writing a book series. Everybody has a 3, 4, 5, 6, 12-part series. Don't uh, because it may work in books, but... No one is making a 10-part series movie. Um, Well, not only that, Harry Potter, which was extraordinarily successful, has only had a few movies in that series made to date, Yeah, if I recall correctly. I can't remember how many have been made, um, but it's not one for every book. They've made a lot of those, but but they're they're still not done there. Now they're doing the, what, Fantastic Beasts, you know, prequel stuff. They will Mm -hmm. bleed that dry, because that is what Hollywood does. It bleeds something dry dry until just no one wants anything to do with it anymore. But um, but they're not going to do that unless your book series is as successful as Harry Potter. And, uh, and even then, uh, because of the latest book series, the Divergent series not doing very well, uh, a lot of the newer YA series not living up to Twilight ex- expectations in the last few years, you know, they cut the last divergence off, and it's going to, like, lifetime television, you know, as a TV movie Ooh. with a new star. So, wow, I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> Even the last couple of Hunger Games did not do nearly as well. Uh, they weren't nearly as good, but they weren't nearly, uh, they didn't do nearly as well as the first couple. Um, and so because of that, they've kind of put a, you know, three-movie limit You know, maybe four, if it's really a hugely successful series, like Hunger Games or Harry Mm -hmm. Potter. Mm -hmm. But, Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're writing an eight-part book series, you're going to screw yourself because eventually, especially if you want to write that script yourself, you're going to have to get those, uh, what, 3,000 pages, five, uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, 5,000 pages that you've written. Um down to, say, like, you know, 300 pages. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's really, really hard to do. Um, so, yeah, don't write huge book series thinking that you're going to get six movies made. Uh, you have to have a character that people are going to care about, of course, which is the same in books, and just invest in and, and be layered and fully developed and three-dimensional. But it also has to be someone that is castable. You know, there has to be something to that character that an actor, uh, you know, a name actor, for the most part, depending on what genre you're writing, is going to want to play. Um, And and it has to be something that can sell overseas. Depending on your budget level, uh, you know, what the budget of the film version would be, it has to sell overseas because what people don't really uh, know too much, even people in the you know, who love movies and who write screenplays uh, solely, they don't really know often that most of the money that a film makes is from overseas. So Uh, so what you're saying, Danny, there needs to be a global appeal. Absolutely. That's that's the essential thing that I'm, you know, I'm hearing you um, go uh, with that. And, And although I will... You know, counter where you're saying there's always a publisher out there for for every you know type of book that that's that's changed a lot in that because they are spooked too in a lot of things and they have their own little formulas. But 
that authors do have other options where they can quickly create their own presses, they can do their own things, and they can start pushing out themselves. It's a lot harder to, oh, well, I'll just quickly make my own movie. <laughs> yeah, yes, considerably. And, and that's a major difference between the book world and the film world. Um, a, a major, major difference. And we can talk about some self-publishing uh, you know, later as well. But, yeah, there's a final product with books. You know, and, and even though there is a final product with screenplays, you're done with the screenplay. Um, there's a big difference there because, you know, 98 percent of screenplays don't sell. Uh, mm, that's a huge. But, that's huge. I didn't know that. Sure. I mean, and probably 99.3 percent of first screenplays don't sell. Um, you know, but the difference is once you're done with a book, even if everyone hates it. Even if you have been turned down by 200 agents and 200 editors and every single publisher in the entire industry, um, you can still get it published. Mm -hmm. You can still do it yourself, put out a product, and maybe even make some money you mm -hmm. know, off of it if you're smart enough at marketing and, and all of those things that you teach so wonderfully. Um, you can still be a published novelist and and making some money out there and you can do that over and over and over once you're done with a screenplay if you've sent it out to a hundred companies and a hundred agents and everyone passes you now have two years worth of paperweight that you can do absolutely nothing with and no one will ever see and that's the major difference and that's why you know that is a major difference because you know that what you're working towards, even if everyone else hates it, you can mm -hmm. call yourself a published author, author, put it out there, and, you know, and hopefully make some money and find a following, even if the industry itself didn't like it. And with screenplays, it's just done. You just and have so, to move on. You know, so as we wrap up, because we're going to go to a quick commercial break here, but it's really in, in knowing your, you need to know these numbers. You, you do need to understand the odds. Um, and, and, and take it from there. We're going to be right back with us is Danny Manis, and we're talking about no bull script screenwriting. And we're going to get into literally, so, so what do you do maybe to get the attention? It's author you, your guide to book publishing. I'm Judith Sohel. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good. If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed Jazz, punch, and panache. Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. 
With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. So when Danny Manis said that when you're looking at the roughly 2,500 books a day, a day that are being published, (laughs) versus maybe, you know, you're looking at 250 scripts that get picked up a year, the odds are not clearly in your favor. So, Danny, what what is Hollywood looking for? What kind of measurements? Is there is there some kind of a formula or kind of a little slot that they go in that they pay attention to? Well, sort of. Um, you know, they're always looking for books. I mean, the upside really is that, of course, books are still the hottest thing in Hollywood. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. having IP, having a great, a successful book, uh, a book published by a major publisher, um, a, you know, a book being sent out by a well-connected agent, they are still the hottest thing selling. Uh, so that is a great thing. In terms of a formula, no, not exactly, although everyone seems to think that what Hollywood puts out is formulaic, but um, there's no set formula except that you know, if you're writing a YA, you have to have a love story. If you don't have a love story, no one's watching your YA project. Um, you know, if you're writing, mm. um, you know, if you're writing action, uh, it, it, like we said before, it has to be global. If you're writing, you know, uh, horror uh, and thrillers, they need to be scary and suspenseful in a way that's going to reach a global audience that people can connect to emotionally. Um, of course, and that's the same thing in, in the book world. Um, there's no major, there's no major formula. However, if you're going to uh, self-publish and not go the traditional publishing route, you have to know how much of a beast you have to be in marketing, and you have to create a buzz for your own project that normally, in you know, a publisher or an agent would create for you, um, and you probably have to sell about at least 50,000 copies of your self-published book for Hollywood to go, hey, maybe there's something here if a self-published book is selling 50,000 copies. Um, and so, you know, before you go the self-publishing route and, you know, sell 450 copies of your book, um, <laughs> you know, probably take another run take as many runs, uh, unless you are, uh, you know, unless you are Judith Bryles and are a marketing genius, um, you know, oh. take another run at, at, you know, the regular mainstream publishing, because that is what Hollywood is looking for, um, mostly, when it comes to books, unless, you know, and everyone's like, but what about Fifty Shades of Grey? Like, That's an anomaly, a statistical anomaly. Um, and so... You can't put all your hopes and dreams on being literally the one in a, in a million uh, or one in ten million um, that is going to be the anomaly that just goes bananas. Um, so, well, you know, yeah, you, used a, you used a phrase, Danny, that I loved, that they have to be a marketing beast. And yeah. that literally that you do have to be a marketing beast. And for people who are thinking self, um, Fifty Shades of Grey was self-published and she was a marketing beast. She was a humongous marketing beast and yeah. she did those 50,000 copies. So, Oh, yeah. I, it was, I mean, it happens, but it happens seldom. So, I mean, there's no, <laughs> there is no formula, but the best way to get picked up by Hollywood is to, A, know your audience, 
B, make sure that audience is large enough that it's going to be a profitable project uh, for people. And that means it's more than just the people you know that would want to read or watch a movie version of your book. So when your brother and sister and mother and roommate say, oh, my God, your story is so great, it should be a movie, um, start asking people that are not related to you and that don't know you and don't know your story, especially if it's a personal story that you've written. Mm -hmm. um, if you're writing a true story or you're writing a autobiography or a biopic of some sort, uh, make sure that what is happening in that story is something that everyone can relate to and everyone uh, uh, and, and everyone is uh, invested in and is something big enough. You know, you got to look at the biopics um, you got to look at the biopics that are being made um, that are being made by Hollywood right now uh, and the stakes in those uh, in those films you know 127 hours and social network and all those tons of things that are getting made as biopics um, mm -hmm. stakes of those are so high uh, and they are things that most people cannot connect with they are people that uh, things that most people cannot achieve in their life and that's a big difference between publishing and the movie world uh it's actually a really big difference in terms of a formula for stories that they make is the book world is very much about creating a community you know we write things and there's book clubs because everyone can relate to this story you know everyone's been through something like this and we can relate and we can talk about it and the movie world is very much about escapism and entertainment and it's much more about something that while on a human level we can relate to we can't relate on an experience level it's something we don't go through in our daily lives it's so different and special that we pay thirty dollars to go see a movie about it um, so that we can experience it. Mm -hmm. And that's a big difference in audience and the types of stories that are, that are kind of getting made. Uh, so, you know, when people write their true stories and their memoirs, especially their memoirs, mm -hmm. um, you kind of have to look at the biopics and the types of stories that are being made by Hollywood and seeing, does my story live up to that? You know, does, does my story reach that level of insanity? you know, in a, in a compelling, visual, cinematic way um, that people are going to want to go see it. So while there's no real formula, you do have to ask yourself some of those questions as you decide if you're going to, you know, try to adapt or, or thinking about adapting and if you're going to try to sell to Hollywood um, and if the external conflict is driving your story. Which is, you know, which is Danny, I'd, I'd love to ask you. So when you when you talk about the biopics, because I think this is really for, for people who are writing memoirs. I mean, I, I have actually come across some amazing memoirs that we're doing that I think that do, does have that hook to it. But that what would you use as a model for an, an you know, a, a successful biopic? Hmm. Uh, and there's so there uh, there are a lot being made by Hollywood. Uh, I will say that. Um, but uh, you know everything from Lincoln, you know, to uh, uh, to the Aviator, to Ali, to Aaron Brockovich. Mm -hmm. Even uh, Aaron Brockovich isn't totally a biopic, but you know it is. It is. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, I would call it Brockovich. Yeah. Yeah. Um, boy, there are so many today being made, but, you know, they're, they're, they're made when, when there is knowledge about that person, you know, or there is buzz about that person, mm -hmm. or their story has been in the news. You know, even the Bat Kid, you know, that Bat Kid viral sensation, uh, you know, that movie's made. You know, that movie is either in production or was just in production, um, you know, and that was just something that it went viral, and and that seems to be a new threshold for 
for biopics is, you know, did you have a story that went viral uh, in some way and, and got a lot of buzz? Um, yeah, I mean, so, there's... So maybe the precursor is that if you've got enough stuff that you create some kind of a video or do, and you get it up on YouTube and try to drive it as the marketing beast in that direction. To, Absolutely. Uh, to pick it up that way. Um, Absolutely. Because yeah, that that could be the bus. Now, would you? Um, one of my pictures. I mean, some people thought it was light, whatever. But I, I really kind of loved um, Hidden Figures from last sure, year. Is great movie. that would be considered a biopic, correct? Mm-hmm. You've got the yeah. biography of these three women, um, and there really wasn't. There was a there was a book. It really wasn't a huge bestseller. It came a bestseller after uh, the movie was made. Mm-hmm. So, but it was, you know, and I think you'll see more of those. I think there's more of those critters out there. Um, Absolutely. Uh, you know, Hidden Figures came at a at a very difficult time in Hollywood at the right time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Hollywood has been battling its diversity issue um, yeah. and its female protagonist issue, especially in the last, you know, five, six years. And uh, when everyone seems to have realize the fact that we don't have enough diversity in Hollywood. And plus, I mean, look, it was a fantastic movie. One of my top five favorite movies of last year. Uh, and it was a wonderful script. Um, you know, written by a female scientist, you know, <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um, you know, they had that personal connection to the story that they were really able to bring it out. Uh, she was one of the writers, uh, Alison Schroeder. And so, uh, yeah, it was a great film. It also came at the right time, right time, had the right marketing push, had the right buzz because of what was going on in the zeitgeist and in, you know, mm-hmm. and in Hollywood circles. Everyone was looking for that movie. Ah, uh, so the window, great, the window opened and it was the there. Exactly. We're gonna, yeah. Exactly. All right, exactly. we're going to take another quick break. Let's take another quick break and come back to that. So, I mean, does does your book? Is it, going to, is it in the right place at the right time? We'll find out when we come back with Danny Manis, who is the brains behind uh, the No Bull Script Consulting. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Want to publish like a pro today? Well, then take a look at Ingram Spark, the only publishing platform that offers print and ebook services through a single source. Upload, edit, and manage titles all in one place. Take more control of printing costs with print on demand and reach even more readers through one of the world's most extensive distribution networks. Built by independent publishers for independent publishers, Ingram Spark has everything you need to maximize your book's potential. Color printing, ebook distribution, print on demand, global reach, and more. Start publishing with Ingram Spark today and see just how far your titles will go tomorrow. That's IngramSpark.com. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 866 3226. 1106 Design.
Ed Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. One of the takeaways on this edition of Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing with uh, script writing expert and consultant, Danny Manis, is that you may really have a great book and and people have told you this is a phenomenal read this this should be a movie i've heard it many times for uh through many of the clients that i've had the pleasure of working with but the reality is what danny has shared in the previous segments is that if no one else knows that this is a great read and we're talking about masses we're not talking about your, your cronies and your tribe and maybe a few hundred people. We're talking about buku numbers of people. Hollywood um, and the powers to be are going to be far less likely to do anything but yawn. Is that correct, Danny? Yeah, sadly. Right. Uh, it usually is, yeah. Yeah, so marketing beast in you needs to be your new mantra. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and getting that out. That's going to be one of my new favorite phrases, Danny. Um, going along here. So let's talk about the pitch. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I've heard you and I have a mutual friend, Philippa Burgess, and she has talked about there's there's kind of little slots that Hollywood's looking for, to fit, you know, when they're going and filling in. If you don't fill in, she had like three slots, if I recall correctly. If you don't fit into any one of these slots, forget it type of thing. I mean, it, it, what's your take on that kind of thing? How do you pitch for the screen? You know, pitching for the screen is not horribly different than pitching a book. Um, it encompasses a lot of the same things, and there's a lot of opportunities out there. Uh, quite frankly, not as many as there are for books. There are, I mean, you know, there's, what, thousands of book conferences, you know, around the country, around uh, around the world, probably tens of thousands. And with screenwriting, there's, like, ten. <laughs> mm-hmm. But... Um, you know where where execs will go and agents and reps will go and you can pitch them for the five or ten minutes and you know it's kind of that uh, speed dating type of feel uh, but it does work sometimes uh, and there's online opportunities as well but if before you go and do that and especially before you paid money to go and do that you have to have down what I like to call the five C's uh, of okay. pitching. And my five C's uh, of pitching, in in order of how you're going to use them, basically, uh, is number one, context, number two, concept, number three, characters, number four, conflict, and number five, confidence. Although technically your confidence should come first, but uh, that's the one that's just, you know, pretty 
self-explanatory. Okay. Um, you know, in terms of the others, you want to set up the context for your book uh, and the content, or the context for your script. So that includes having a a great logline. That includes knowing the genre or subgenre uh, of your project. Mm -hmm. uh, that includes knowing the comps of your project. You know, it's in the vein of this movie and that movie. You know, where it's kind of it's this meets that. It's kind of setting up a a context for the person tonally and in the right genre for what they're about to expect. Um, and you always want to pick the right comps because if you pick the wrong comps, you know, if you pick things that didn't do well at the box office or didn't do well critically, you're basically saying, here's this piece of crap and that piece of crap, and mine's just like those. Um, so don't do that. Pick, uh, pick good films that have been received uh, well critically and or were box office successes, uh, and mm -hmm. you would do the same thing in books. You know, everybody wants to know what the comps are. You wouldn't pick a book that literally no one has heard of and never made a dime. Um, and, uh, and you want to set up the context of you. Why are you the writer that had to write this story? What, is, what was the inspiration or connection um, that makes you the expert? on this story, the person that could write this story, because that's what producers want. They want to work with someone who is the only one who could possibly write this story as well as it is written. Um, so if you can set up that context first, let them know what they're about to hear and why they should hear it from you, then you go into your concept. What is your idea about? What is your story about? Uh, what is your film about? Uh, what is the hook? Which is kind of the, like the five C's and an H uh, right. The hook is, you know, what is that thing that's going to make it stand out and make it different than all others in the same genre? You know, you don't have to. Uh, I have a saying, and I say it often, so I'm not coming up with this off the top of my head here, but uh, your job as a writer is not to run from the cliche. It's to make it seem not cliche. Um, you know, so Boy Meets Girl still works. You just have to do something really new and different with it. And, of course, in today's world, uh, Boy Meets Boy works just as well as also, you know. And so you got to do something different with that dynamic and that paradigm. But um, tell them what or, the hook or, is. Or tell them the log the line. Or the girl meets the beast, you know, <laughs> that we that have. Too. Yeah. You know, you know Disney um, did that quite well. Yes, and made quite a, quite a little piece of money. Uh, and, and they're going to be doing it again and again and again and again. Um, as a, uh, that's concept characters, who we're following, why we care, you know, why these are the characters, uh, the one or two main characters that we're going to be following, what they have to accomplish, what their place in the world is, um, and how they're going to change, you know, what their, basically what their arc is, uh, that you're going to, you know, kind of get across over the course of your pitch, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and kind of just what the A to B of your story is, you know, through your character. Uh, sometimes, you know, especially if you only have five, six minutes to pitch or, or less, you know, you start going through every scene, every chapter, every whatever, and you're like, oh, my God, is this pitch ever going to end? Um, you know, you can't do that. There's just not enough time in the world. So... You know, know what the A to B of your story is and how your character goes, uh, changes, develops over the course of that story so we get a, a clear picture of it um, and, and why we're going to care about them uh, and uh, what they have to achieve, what's standing in their way, uh, and, uh, and where they end up. Uh, and uh, what was the other one? A conflict. You know, what is the, uh, you know, what, what, are the what is the main line of conflict? driving your story, what is the main internal and external, and I want to underline external line of conflict driving your story, um, because in a film, you know, not ho totally different from books, but a little bit, um, your, your conflict cannot just be internal. It can't be a person who just comes to realize something or makes a choice. There has to be an external conflict driving the story because that is what's going to make it visual uh, and compelling. Otherwise, we're just watching an actor thinking for 90 minutes. And that, um, you know. <laughs> That's not going to sure, work. 
<laughs> no, I mean, I'm sure James Franco will make some Art Deco piece about that, but for most people, it's not going to work. Um, so, yeah, you have to make it clear what conflict is driving that story and how it is building and the stakes are increasing as the story goes. What is on the line in your story that's going to make it compelling for an audience to invest in? Um, and then, of course, confidence. You have to own that room. You have to own that pitch. Go in with a game plan. Never sit down and be like, oh, this is my first time ever pitching my idea. I don't really know what I'm doing. Well, then get up, leave the room, go practice, go do some sample pitches, pitch to your writer friends, your writer's group, everyone in the hallway waiting. Like, Go do 50 pitches and practice for a couple of weeks and then come back because no executive wants to be your guinea pig. They want someone who's ready to sell their their script or their book. Um, yeah, I, so I think, Danny, the- yeah, one of the biggest challenges I've seen this, it, it just, it's like when we ask an author, well, uh, you know, who is your book for and what it's about? They cannot say it quickly and yeah. succinctly. 90% yeah. of them throw up um, with so many <laughs> words and variations. And before you know it, you're hearing about their dog, Muffy. It just doesn't <laughs> work. Yeah, don't talk yourself out of a yes. Like, people are there. They're taking your pitch, whether it's online, in person, you know, in query form, whatever. You know, they're there looking for material. That's their job is to find material, you know. And so just don't talk yourself out of a yes, Uh, which, by the way, I should say with querying, that's a huge difference between book and film. Huge Mm -hmm. difference. You know, that lush pile that every, you know, book editor and publisher talks about and all the queries that they get, every single publisher pretty much has a submission. They want your queries. That is actually the form of submission in books. Yes, but if you don't have it, if you don't snag them in the first few lines and paragraph, you go in the slush file. Absolutely. You know, you have to do it very, very, very quickly. So, Absolutely, you know, but it, queries are uh, not the thing in, in film that they mm-hmm. are in books. You know, people, mm-hmm. we don't, uh, producers and agents, they don't accept unsolicited queries. So mm-hmm. you send them a query letter, there is no submission form for query letters or, mm-hmm. you know, there's no link on a website. You're sending something and paying for a stamp or sending an email if you can get their email addresses, hoping that they don't realize that it's a query letter and that they open it, read it, love it, and respond to it. Exactly. So and if, if you hold that, Danny, Danny, let's, we'll come back with that. And then let's talk about how we find and work with people like you that can help us move along and, and, and not stumble so much. It's up to you, your guys, to public thing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd.
One of the most important decisions you will ever make is your choice for printing your book. You are choosing a company which will be responsible for guiding you through the process and printing your book at a level of quality and detail that embraces your personal and creative needs. You want to choose a company that when your book finally arrives, you are delighted and ready to move on to the next level and one that is customer focused. Choose King Printing Company and Addy Books to be that company that brings you to the next level. Go to kingprinting.com or call 978-458-2345 and ask for Tom Campbell. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR, perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based e-books, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask if you want to write and publish a book if you want to be successful as an author your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask is for you stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics scenarios and strategies on what to do now to get you published so let's get back to the show and here again is your host dr judith briles all right we've been talking script plays, uh, screenplays, screen, script writing. Um, is is there a movie in you, so to speak? And some of the really very common snafus. And with us is Danny Manis. Danny is the author himself of a book, so he gets being the author side for sure, called No BS for Screenwriters, which I would recommend. And he also does consulting. Um, and helps fix things and, 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 you know, nourishes them. So, Danny, I'd love to have you get into some of that. So when someone comes in to you, um, what, what should they expect, why they're expecting? And what do you expect when, what comes through the door? Um, they should expect, you know, honest, professional, constructive feedback, at whatever juncture they're at in their writing. And I, I work with writers, but I work with film, TV, and book um, at, at almost every stage. So I have writers who are like, hey, I have 10 ideas. I'm not sure which one I should write, and I'm not sure how to flesh it out. And we kind of do a brainstorming session and go through it all. Um, so it could start at that basic of a level. Um, mm-hmm. Or, you know, I have a, a first act. You know, I've written the first 30 pages of my script, and I don't know if it's going well. I do that. And, of course, you know, full drafts, and, you know, I'm on my 10th polis draft, and I'm about to send it out, and I want to know that it's good enough and, you know, make sure that I'm not crazy uh, and have that, you know, uh, unbiased person uh, who's been through it. You know, I've been a writer. I've been an executive. Uh, I've been on both sides, so uh, so I know what they're looking for. Um, I was, you know, I was a development exec. That's how I started my career. Uh, even though I came out to to write, you know, I started my career as an executive at a number of different you know production companies. We had three number one movies that my companies made over the years uh, at the box office, and you know, and so that's how I started uh, approaching consulting when I started consulting. Uh, mm-hmm. And so what they're going to expect is, um, you know, insightful feedback and uh, and professional insight from someone with that experience level. Uh, and on the book side, same thing. Um, I, I don't do book editing, I will say. I don't do book editing. I will leave that for, uh, you know, smarter people than I. 
but um, but I do uh, consultants uh, consulting with authors who are wondering if their story is strong enough, wondering if their characters are strong enough, wondering how uh, if this is something that can be adapted and how they might go about doing that structurally, breaking down this 300 page you know, behemoth into a hundred page script and what's necessary and what's not necessary. So uh, they're going to get really in depth, um, feedback and notes. Uh, you know, I have a number of different services and things, but they're all really in depth. Um, I, I kind of go over and above or I really try to, uh, you know, with every, every service and every client. And in terms of what I expect, um, you know, I expect someone to be open to notes. That's that's what I expect. Is if you're, especially you know, if you're going to someone who's a, a, a paid professional with 15 years experience, and they're giving you notes, uh, and they're taking hours and hours and hours of time to read your script and write notes and things, then I expect my clients just to be open to notes and be open to criticism, uh, and be open to critique. Because if you're not, then you're just kidding yourself. You know, if you're paying someone. Uh, just to give you a pat on the back and say, hey, great job, go go sell it, kid, you know, then you're going to be disappointed uh, with my service because that's not what I do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a lot of different consultants out there. Some are a little bit more uh, cheerleader, hand-holdy uh, than, than others. Uh, when I started No Bull Script, which is about, you know, what, uh, eight, over eight years now, uh, eight years ago, you know, I was the Simon Cowell script consultant. You know, I wasn't mean, but I was, pr I was really direct. You know, I was, you know, I was more Simon Cowell than, uh, at, at the time American Idol was big. So I was more Simon Cowell than Paul Abdul, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, maybe I've tempered over the years. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I believe in honest, criticism not mean certainly not you know not nothing personal or anything um but that's how you learn that's how you make your scripts and stories stronger uh and if you you know if you think i'm direct just wait until hollywood gets a hold of you because that's another big difference is you know with books you're going to have an editor you're going to have a publisher and they're going to give you notes um with hollywood you're getting notes from everyone you know, like, if you think you did a lot of drafts on your book, wait until you try to write the script. Uh, and the marketing department has notes, and, you know, the director has notes, and every actor who comes in the project has notes, and the producers have notes, and the financiers have notes, and the art department has notes. And, you know, I mean, you're going to get notes through the post-production process. So, you know, you're going to be rewriting through post-production, through post -production, even after the movie is made you're still going to be writing that story and fixing that story. So if you can't take notes before you even send it out to the world, this probably isn't for you. Mm -hmm. So those are just really common things. And do, do you, you know, I, I didn't even mention that if you want to follow Danny, he's on Twitter at Danny Manus, M-A-N-U-S, um, that I, I think that knowing Danny as I do, he's he is blunt, he's to the point, which is why we connect because that's kind of my style. Yeah. <laughs> and and you have to take it. I had the pleasure of being in St. Louis uh, it, toward the end of July doing an all day uh, marketing book marketing workshop, four hours intense. And as I went around the room, just greeting and meeting people and looking at their book covers quickly. That I, you know, I instantly have an opinion. <laughs> I instantly yeah, have an opinion, sure. and and I would ask people that you know, I would say you know, there's you, there's some tweaking I'm going to recommend to you. Can I use your? And, and I would t I would tell them, and I said, do I have your permission to show your book and tell the group what I think is wrong, and what can be fixed? And you know, they all they were great. They, this sure. publishing group was great in St. Louis, but that's really. I think that you've got to be open. So you need to, um, if you have any chips on your shoulders, you need to remove them quickly. Because if you're working with a consultant, you do, in my opinion, you don't want someone that pussyfoots around. You want someone who is bold and, and blunt and will kind of tell you what it is. And it, using your example of, of Simon Cowell, I'm more like a Simon Cowell. 
Um, but but I'm I'm blunt, butt kicking, but benevolent, and right. and 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 he does some have some soft sides to him. But you have to have someone who's willing to tell you the truth, as their experience brings it, and that's what you know is important. Danny has gone through over thirty five hundred. Can you imagine thirty five hundred pitches um, through the yeah. years? And yeah. you've you've heard it a zillion times. You've heard it a and zillion that's times. Yeah, 6,000 scripts. So here's the reality is that I can tell pretty much within 10 words where this thing is going, or if it's going to go anywhere. I suspect you can too, Daddy. Yeah. So I, I think I probably have about an, I would say an 87% accuracy. I, I, I know within a first page or, or 30 seconds if this is, you know, going to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and and so you have to hear that. But da as Danny says in the very early, it the, the odds are not great. <laughs> so you've got to find ways to to tweak the cliches. You've got to find ways to really constructively pitch what you're doing. You have to be a decent writer. And if you're not, but you've got a hell of an idea, get help. Right? Get help because there are people out there who can, you know, t you take your amazing, awesome, off-the-wall story and do the fine-tuning for you. At least I believe that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And that, it's a big thing with, in the script writing world. You know, rewriting is writing. And mm -hmm. book writers, you know, make their living off, for the most part, writing their own original ideas uh, mm -hmm. and getting them continuously published. And that's how they make money. Uh, in the screenwriting world, you don't. In the screenwriting world, the long-term career and the money comes from rewriting other people's stuff and being hired to write other people's ideas. Mm -hmm. That's the career. Yeah, so and, and if you're not able to take notes and translate that into, you know, uh, or look at a piece of material and know how to rewrite that, how to address those notes, how to improve things in the rewriting process, you're kind of, you know, you'll be a one-hit wonder, but that's, that's about it. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a supremely important process to learn and to go through before you start submitting to pros. And you only get one chance with some of these companies. And you want to make sure your script, your book, uh, you know, your short film is uh, as strong as it possibly could be before it leaves your hands and goes out into the world. Uh, right. And so that's, that's what consultants do is we're – you know, we're your pre-managers, uh, some of us, that do that kind of thing in career coaching. And, uh, you know, we're your kind of first and last line of defense because we're on your side because when my clients succeed, I succeed. And, you know, I only want the best for my clients. I try to get my clients' work out there if it's really And with that to said, seen. Danny, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're coming up to our final little bit here. But oh, yeah. if you want to talk to Danny, his website is nobullscript.net. And that I'm going to highly recommend that you track it down, get his book, um, and take advantage of this is your direction. You for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each